In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a VBA routine that's going to create a customized workbook. The customization that we're going to make is this. We want to create a new workbook that contains a worksheet for each company. So we have the list of companies here. Each of the worksheets in this new workbook should get a name from here. Then inside each of these worksheets, we want to populate cell A1 to equal the company name and cell A2 should be the manager's name. Here we can make good use of arrays. We can keep this information in a two-dimensional array because we're dealing with rows and columns. So rows will be one dimension and columns will be the second dimension. So once we store this in the array, it's really easy to reuse that information. Okay, so let's see how we can set that up. Let's bring up the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. I've already created an empty module called Project Activity. Inside this module, let's create a new sub called Manager Report. Okay, let me collapse this. First off, let's dim our array. I'm going to dim comp info. Okay, we call it comp info. It's going to have two dimensions, right? So one is going to be for rows and the other one for columns. So in this case, let's assume that our companies are fixed. I'm going to use a two dimensional fixed array and say one to eight. And the columns are one to two. My lower bound is one. That's an easier way of working with rows and columns, right? So if we leave out the one and just put in the upper bound, the lower bound is automatically going to be zero. Okay, so that's one thing we need. Second, we're going to be looping through the rows here and the columns here. So let's dim them as well. So I'm going to dim R for the rows as, well, since we don't have that many companies and we're not going to have over like 200 companies. I'm going to dim this as byte and I'm also going to dim the column as byte since it's only two columns here. Now we can start filling up our array. Let's create our loop. We say for first is the rows. So for r equal one to eight and let's do next r. Okay, so we're going to go through each row but the moment we're in the first row, we also need to loop through the column. So we need to do column one, column two. Then it's for C equals one to two. And let's do next C here. Now we want to fill up our array. So this one with the values of this table, right? Because right now our array, our box is empty, right? We need to fill that up. So we're going to say comp info. Now we need to decide on the row and column. Since we're looping through them, I'm going to do R and C. Now this equals cells. Now, is this also R and C dot value? Well, it would have been R and C dot value if my data range here started from A1, right? Then I could leave it like this, but I can't leave R like this because R actually starts from seven. So I need to make an adjustment, but C I can leave like this, right? Because it's, I'm in column one and two, just like my array one and two. For R, I need to move them by six. I could do plus six. And to make this easier to read, I could declare a constant for this on top. So let's do constant start row as now this would also be byte in this case, but if our entire data set is like somewhere on the bottom of our sheet, I just want to be sure we don't run into problems. So let me do as long here and it equals six. Since it's a constant, we're going to define it on top. This one I can remove and replace with start row. Okay. So, that's it, right? This way I'm going to fill up the array. Let's just bring up the locals window. That's a good one to look at your array after it gets filled. Let's run this, but let me stop it before it leaves the loop and empties the array. 
So let me press play here and see if everything gets populated properly. So this is each of my dimensions in my array. Let's open that. So comp info one, one, that's jellyfish, one, two, so row one, two in the table, that's this one. And let's look at the last one as well. H1 is pairs and H2 is that. Okay, so my array here has been filled now with the contents of this table. Okay, so let's stop this and get rid of the breakpoint there. So we fill up the array. Now we want to create a new workbook and then inside that workbook create new sheets for each of these companies. We can also declare variables for them. I'm going to say dim new book as a workbook and dim, let's call it sheet new, sh new as worksheet. Let's move down. And after this loop, we're going to create a new workbook. So let's set our new book equals workbooks.add. Now we want to loop through this workbook and add new sheets to it. So I'm actually going to reuse R for worksheets here as well, right? Because that R is my rows here is eight. So I'm going to have eight worksheets as well. I can create a new loop here and say for R equals one to eight. Let's do next R. Now here I'm going to create a new sheet. Every time the loop runs, a new sheet is created. So I'm going to set sh new equals my new book dot worksheets dot add. Okay, so I'm creating a new sheet for each of these here. Then we need to assign the name of the sheet to be equal to the company name. We're going to do sh new dot name equals here we can refer to our filled box, our filled array. So that's going to be comp info. Now, what do I have to select here? What's the row? It's the R, right? So if it's in number one, it's going to be jellyfish. If it's number two, it's going to be das ring. What about the column? Well, that's going to be fixed, right? Because my company name is in column one. Then I can also do sh new dot. Now I want to write in cell A1, so I'm going to do dot range A1 dot value equals a comp info, the same thing, right? It's going to be R1. And now the next one, well here I could have actually used a with and end with statement. I can do range A2 dot value equals, what should this one be now? R2, right? Because I want to put the manager name in cell A2. That's it. We close the loop there. And if everything goes well, we should get a new workbook with this information filled. Let's test that. Let's add also a button for this. Manager report, and let's call this create report. Okay, let's test. We got a new workbook. Okay, it's called book one. We have, let me just bring this up so that you can see the different tabs. So we have one tab per company. We have the company name and we have the manager name in front of it right here. Okay, so that's how you can use arrays in your code. You can fill up these arrays and reuse them to create such reports. This video was brought to you by Unlock Excel VBA and Macros course, where you're going to learn how to simplify your work and how to save time by automating complex and routine tasks. We're going to go from beginner all the way to advanced. For more information, check out the description of this video or go to xelplus.com slash courses.